previously on Project Go. Hi, Hi Gina. Gina. A domain name is an online address, similar to your street address. It belongs to you. Q, what was the domain name that you're using? Loopstar.ph. Pearl, you have selected a very cool and unique domain. It's hirestaff.works. <laughs> I like it. So I did a little something with your logos. Mindochero, in essence, is cloud learning. Yeah, so that's right. Okay, that's, that's what I figured, yeah. I was wondering if negative images or graphics is allowable. For my brand, at least, I would like to keep it as positive as possible. Again, it really depends on your brand. I am Maggie Wilson, your host and mentor. And this is the third episode of Project Go. Let's check on our teams. Hi, everyone. Hi. How are you doing today? Feeling a little jittery? Yes. Yes? Oh, yes? don't be. Today, you will be working on your websites. And you will also have sharing sessions with the other mentors. Over to you, Tina. Hello, good morning, entrepreneurs. How are you today? Good. Hi, Hi Tina. Today, we will be focusing on websites. How do we build a professional and beautiful website for you to share and grow your business online? We talk about domain is the street address of your store. And website is the house you build on it. A website is one of several online pages that are located under domain name. And most importantly, you do not have to be tech savvy to build a website. It's actually a very fast and easy process at GoDeck. Search friendly content. Do think how you would search for a service, a product, an offer. Search engine optimization is the process which you optimize your website and content. This is the way for search engine to be able to find and display your website in relevant user searches. So make sure when you design the content in your website, it is targeted or catered towards how you think your customer would search. I really like the session with Ms. Tina, everything about the website and setting it up. And well, for me, I think it was very beneficial because I had to redesign and revamp the website. And I also have to change a lot of things about the website. Business listing, a very important part of online presence. It included information like your address, like your website, your phone number, and your opening hours. Please do make sure you do update those into an accurate information. Social media. Social media is about connecting, conversing, and sharing. And it is very important part of how you put yourself out there. Choose the right network that fits your business type. Online security. Online security is super, super important. Please make sure you do have the right online security tools to protect your site, protect your business, and protect your customers. So next, we move on to planning your website. Here are the five steps that I've laid it out. I now hand you over to our GoDaddy guides on site, Jenny and Michelle. Thank, Thank you, Tina. You. The main objective is for us to be able to teach them on how to create their own website from scratch and to be able for them to publish it. Websites, personal or business websites. I'm expecting that they be, you know, they'd be enthusiastic and en getting started with their own website. So what do you think you must have in order to get your online presence? The home or landing page? Product page? You need an FAQ page. We know that small business owners' time and money is very critical. So we're going to show them how websites plus marketing can help them manage all at one place without having to spend much time and money. So let's jump start with getting your website created. They are actually very enthusiastic. There's a lot of energy when we were starting to get the website built up for them ready. What we've actually done is we've purchased the website plus marketing and have them set up. So they're very happy and they played around actually with the yeah. website plus marketing. And you know, 15 minutes, I think they were able to publish the website. When they actually published the website, they were really happy about it. And they have questions about how to effectively edit those contents and all the questions they have. It's really good to jumpstart their business. 
I think they're all set, Michelle. That's awesome. Congratulations, guys. You were able to create and publish your own websites. We cannot wait to see those websites being used on your big page. Good luck. Do our teams have what it takes to bring their businesses to greater heights? Miko, Mark, and Mackie will share their insights and experiences on building a brand. Oh, I'm excited for the... What's, what's the last name? The, the brothers. Tom brothers. Tom? Tom. Tom, Tom brothers. Tom. So the objective of the session is to effectively tell the brand story of each contestant. I want to be able to relay the experiences I learned and give it to them in a way they could actually understand it and apply it to their own businesses. I just forgot which one of you gave the feedback that our product isn't necessarily the service itself, but our tutors. It's true. We really have to look at the market and we have to convince the customers who prefer traditional companies, right? The thing that I really want to ask from you is what would be the best way to market services? I would market your business or your product by maybe going school to school and having the educators themselves sell your service, right? You guys could be there, but it is very important they're there. They need to believe in the educators, right? My topic um, is something that I normally tell new entrepreneurs because I myself applied the same lesson and it's finding the gaps in whatever industry you plan to enter. Because if we look at the business landscape nowadays, it's a lot more fierce and competition is a lot tougher. So if you're able to identify gaps in the industry, then it becomes a lot easier for you to stand out. It doesn't just end there. Because even when you become an established business, you try to figure out ways how to become the industry leader. It still doesn't end there because you, you're constantly, you constantly need to ask yourself, what is my business still missing? Do you think that we should uh, focus our energies on um, more educational or actually at this point, it's like a fear-based marketing, which we want to avoid? If we're trying to introduce something new, it's very important to communicate it. Marketing is very vital in a business. And if you don't, I will never hear of your product. It'll stay. I've personally run the, our business for about four years already and the, one of the biggest challenges we have is while we also try to identify the gap, sometimes it's a challenge to juggle that and also the everyday operations already. How do I, or, or which should I prioritize? So the best advice that I can give you is to surround yourself with the best possible team because let's face it, there's no way you're going to do everything on your own. And if you believe you're going to do everything on your own, you'll be in for a surprise, especially when you guys get bigger. So as early as now, identify partners, team members that can help you out through this journey and be willing to entrust them with the day-to-days. You need to be open to new ideas. And even if it is your own business, you need to come to terms with the fact that you will never know everything about your own business. Be open to new ideas, new inputs. And from there, your company will grow, and to your question, the workload will be less because you have people who are really willing to help. You just need to be willing to entertain the help they're giving you. All right, so now I'm gonna pass it over to my brother, Mark and he'll share his insights on sales. All right, so I made a little presentation for you guys. The marketing plan system. If you could tackle all of these category, then you'll get an idea how to go about it. This will determine your strength, your weakness, your opportunities, and your threats. SWOT analysis, do you guys know this? I learned this in college, you know, and I still use this when I'm in the office with, with our staff. You gotta understand what your strength, weakness, opportunity, and threats. If you have all of this, you have a clear picture of how to go about in running your own business. And my last, set targets. 
assigned territories, and goals and quotas. All these things I'm sharing with you guys is from my experience, and I hope you guys learned something from me, and maybe you could use it in your own business startup. My objective is to, to understand what the product or service they're trying to sell and give them recommendation how it could work here in the Philippine market. For the brand, we have the FDA certification pending. We also have the intellectual property rights uh, applied for. I was wondering, in marketing, how does that work? Well, for your product, yes, definitely, it's something you should leverage on because it would reassure your consumers, right, that this is not just a small project you made in your garage because you're talking about saving lives, right? So yes, it is worth promoting the fact that, yes, you have the IP for this product. However, it's important to know that if your product is actually everything your customers are looking for. Uh, the point here is you need to study more what your customers really care about. Or like about. a wish list also. Yes. I felt that they're all ready for this the opportunity. And I am honestly excited to see how they handle their final pitch. You could see their willingness to learn. Yeah. Yes. Got it. Right. And if you're looking for financial aids, we're open to it. <laughs> A good story about your business will help you build your brand. Bea will have one-on-one -on -one sessions with the teams to dig deep and discover the stories behind their brands. I want them to tell their story better. Uh, I think the very fact that they're here. I feel some teams could be emphasizing more details or certain details from their story to make it more captivating. So I've been interested really in like entrepreneurship, making businesses. I've uh, started a business with my friends actually like in 10th grade. I was like 16, 15 at that time. And then I started uh, getting more into it. There's a large uh, abundance of banana leaves here in the Philippines. So why not put that into sturdy food container that can replace the plastic. So that's how the idea came about. My story was actually that I was supposed, I've been dead set on being a doctor since I was maybe seven or eight. And then it was only until I actually went into college where I realized that I had hobbies and passions way beyond uh, what my skill set actually was. So I was able to join organizations such as a diving and a mountaineering organization, which really sparked my interest for the environment. And that's when my business started. Thankfully, my partner Q also was there at when we wanted to start something new. And from there, we decided that, hey, why not we really move our production to something local so that it's something we could say it's proudly Filipino because Filipinos are great. It's something that we know that we have the skill set to do. This journey started just uh, a little over five months ago. I'm actually an inventor, innovator um, on the side and actually it's almost a full-time thing for me. Um, we were tapped by uh, PGH. I'm, I'm, I'm very passionate about um, advocacies when it comes to literacy. It allowed me to realize that maybe I, I can do something like for myself and for others. Maybe I can make a real palpable um, solution, you know, to really reaching out to others. So, Mind the Chair was born. My passions, which are music. I also started uh, teaching English to foreign students. And uh, it just, I just really was inspired to, uh, to found Mind the Chair. I ask that of all of you because I think telling your story isn't just about telling the story of what you're selling or the product that you're the, the service you're off or the service experience or product that you're offering because when you talk to media um, one of the things that we look for is human interest because I think I love asking questions and, and finding stories out um, that's what I first did like I just asked them to talk about themselves basically in the brand and the business and the other story. I think interacting on social media in the first place. Try to understand who you are, what voice you want to project on social media. Are you going to be their buddy buddy? Are you going to be more formal in your tone? And then the point of engaging is to build a community. I think Miss Bea gave really good insights uh, from uh, 
social media and a you know general mass media standpoint because as businesses of course it's always important to not only promote but also to preserve our public image you don't um, establish yourself on social media to for the hype simply but really to connect to people to establish communities so you mentioned that you you receive a lot of gold emails oh yeah and i imagine that so oh, it's that's overwhelming all yes yes for you to even go through each one and read them right so what actually picks your interest when mm. you receive a cold email okay first off for example give me a case study like give me a name give me a face of someone that you've helped or of someone who you're helping because it's easier for people to relate. She really made a really a good point, especially in storytelling and how you want to attract media or how you want others to notice you. She was really able to enlighten us, especially since we are a startup, that we should truly be able to be careful from the beginning. Armed with the learnings from the two boot camps, our teams are now ready to face the judges, making the final dash to prepare for the pitch of their lifetime. In the next episode of Project Go, see how our top four teams fare as they make their final pitch to our panel of judges, as they get one step closer to being crowned the winner of Project Go. Wilson, host and mentor of Project Go. If you like this video, like, comment, and subscribe to AXN Asia for more exclusive content from Project Go.